You're listening to Beyond the Stage from the Carpenter Performing Arts Center at Cal State Long Beach. In each episode, we introduce you to the artists, scholars, students, and arts professionals interpreting our world through the arts. In today's episode, I talk to Christina Ramos, Education and Outreach Coordinator at the Carpenter Performing Arts Center about our Arts for Life program. We mentioned this earlier, but you're the Education and Outreach Coordinator for the Carpenter Performing Arts Center and have been since 2017. Um, What does that mean? What all does your role encompass? Uh, I basically manage our free programming. So uh, I handle our elementary education program called Classroom Connections, our Campus Connections program, which offers uh, free master classes, lectures, and workshops to CSUOB students, uh, and also our Community Connections program, which offers things like free public concerts, free readings, and discussions that are open to the Long Beach community. I also do the grant writing for the Carpenter Center because free programming is not actually free to produce or to offer. We need grant funds to support that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, n- nothing's actually free, sadly. <laughs> no. Um, and it's those grants come in huge help um, with making sure that we are able to continue to provide those programs. Um, so during the last year, you also started a new um, Arts for Life program, what ended up becoming our Learning How to Be Anti-Racist series, um, which later t- turned into Learning How to Be Anti-Racist Special Topics. Um, can you talk a bit about how that program started and what it was? I kind of spun off from the Shakespeare meetings. So um, <laughs> it, I don't know that it would have come about if not for that. Request. Yeah, that's true. Um, during that uh, initial week of uprisings uh, following the murder of George Floyd last summer, um, just didn't feel like we could conduct business as usual and hold that weekly Shakespeare reading. So instead we used that time and that Zoom meeting to just have a conversation with our patrons about racism and what we can do as individuals and organizations. But following that initial conversation, our patrons requested that this become a regular thing. Um, Just when we created the weekly learning how to be anti-racist discussions. Uh, And for the first 16 weeks, we went over the basics, like what is racism, and then moved into identifying the characteristics of white supremacy culture, you know. Uh, And then in October, we moved to a once a month discussion to focus more deeply on special topics, things like cultural appropriation, policing, colonization, intersectionality, just to name a few. Was there anything about that um, conversation that you think was successful or not, or made it different because we conducted it in an online space as opposed to in person. How did that shape the conversations as a whole, if if at all? I think being online offered people a bit of anonymity. Anonymity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, They could be off camera, you know, if they wanted to, they could log off and walk away if the conversation got too hard. Um, they didn't have to participate in the conversation or they, they could participate through the chat function instead of having to speak up. I think it would have been harder to convince people to have these very difficult conversations in person, to actually walk into a room and sit across from someone and be vulnerable a lot harder to sell than log in, sit behind a screen in your living room. You know, you're kind of offered that protection, that distance, really. I think it's a a gentler, almost, way to get people into a conversation. It, like, eases them into it, almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How, and we got this question from many different areas, but how did that conversation group, discussion group over the year tie back into the Carpenter Center and its mission? How did it relate back to what we do, which is presenting performing arts 
events? I think anti-racism is relevant to any and every aspect of life, which includes the arts and college and, I mean, you name it. Uh, the Carpenter Center had the means to do it, so why not, why not do it? If you're able, um, it's something worth talking about. And there's almost, I think, a responsibility to be able to provide that space if you can. Anti-racism work is for everyone and for every every field, every industry. Yeah. Was there anything that came up over the year that was uh, exciting or new new for you? I, yeah, or that took you by surprise. <laughs> Well, uh, towards the last several months, uh, participants became more comfortable talking to me and to each other. Uh, and that was really exciting to me to have um, some more dialogue back and forth instead of, you know, me just talking for an hour at them. Uh, there were also like, several aha moments that I saw happen with different people, uh, which was also thrilling. I, kept, I couldn't even tell you who they were or what the moments were anymore, but I... I remember seeing it on their faces um, and having someone be able to explain back to you something you taught them. is really exciting. Um, if at least one person learned one thing. I mean, then it makes the effort worth it. Beyond the Stage is produced by the Carpenter Performing Arts Center at Cal State Long Beach. Views expressed by guests of the show or the host are their own and do not necessarily represent the views of the university. 